Hello and welcome to Now is the Time. I'm Mary Crowley. And on today's program, I actually have some very good friends of mine. They're Aaron and Brenda McKenzie. And they have traveled all over the world. And Brenda recently has just come out with her new book called Abraham's Scroll, Unveiling the Destiny of the Sons of Abraham. It's a fascinating book, and I know you're going to want to stay tuned to hear what they have to say. Welcome to the program, Aaron and Brenda. Thank you. Great to Thank be here. Thank you so much for having us. This is fantastic. So now, why did you sense that, that the Holy Spirit led you to write this book about Abraham's scroll? What is Abraham's scroll? Abraham's scroll is a declaration, a proclamation, and a reading of a person's destiny that's over their life. So when you open up a scroll and unveil it, you're proclaiming something that's coming from the Spirit of God. So my journey began very early, I would say 2006, when I had my encounter with the Lord, and he said, I want you to start with your own name. I want to teach you about who you are. And so since my maiden name is Perez, I really didn't know that it was in the Bible, even though I had read the Bible many times, but I didn't find my name there until he told me to do the research. And so as I began to do that, I didn't realize that from the tribe of Judah, one of the sons was Perez, and of course the other son was Zerah. So as I began the research and started to learn about the Perez lineage, I started to learn the Hebraic definitions. It means the breaker, to break through. Um, and I started to realize how that manifested in breakthrough over my own life and through anything that I was basically doing. So fast forward to several years later when we moved to Israel, names began to fascinate me. And living in Jerusalem and in Bethlehem, um, in the West Bank as well as Israel, we began to pray fervently for um, the Jewish people and the Arab people. And when I specifically moved in, when Aaron and I moved into Bethlehem, it seemed that Ishmael just became in front of me all the time. So I would go to some of the holy sites within Bethlehem. And one day the Lord spoke to me, stand in the gate, Ishmael is coming home. Ishmael's coming through the gate. And I didn't understand what that meant, so it really led me to, to pray fervently about Ishmael. And one particular evening, as we were preparing to go to Hong Kong, the Lord spoke to me very clearly and said, I want you to go sit in your office, and I want you to read Genesis 25. I didn't even know what Genesis 25 was until I said, okay. So I went and sat down, and I realized it was the descendants or the princes of Ishmael. Now, let me back up a little bit. Sure. A lot of people maybe that don't really know the Bible, who was Ishmael? Ishmael was the firstborn son of Abraham. And just to recant the story a little bit for the people watching with Abraham and Ishmael and, and Hagar and Sarah. Wow. Well, in brief, um, Abraham married Sarah, and unfortunately she was barren, so she could not have any children. But later on, when Abraham and Sarah went to Egypt, and they met Pharaoh and began to have a relationship with the Pharaoh, Pharaoh thought it would be very important for his daughter to be in the house of Abraham, so he gave her as a gift to Abraham and to his wife. So she became like a secondary wife and also became a maidservant to Sarah. So many years, the promise to Abraham about his son had not come forth. And Sarah decides to make Hagar a gift to her husband so that she may be able to bear a son through her. And that's how Ishmael came about. But then there came a point when Ishmael received, uh, was a certain age that eventually he was sent away. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Well, the Bible states that uh, Isaac would be the promised son through Sarah. So that didn't happen until several years later. So now you're working in the Palestinian refugee camps in Bethlehem. And in fact, Erin, you were telling me a story earlier that you, you literally, what it, to explain to the people, too, what the West Bank is in Israel. I didn't really know what it was until I went to Israel for the first time myself. The West Bank is considered Palestinian territory. It was given to them during the 1967 war with Israel, and they were able to define their lines of what would be Israel and what would be given to the Palestinians. Uh, it ranges all the way from the north, uh, near the Galilee, all the way south, 
past Jerusalem into Hebron. So it stretches and runs alongside pretty much of Israel as a whole. But now you were working here, in, you were working in Bethlehem with the Palestinian refugees, and you were telling me a story about one of the men who came up to you at some point. What happened? Well, our mandate was the one new man. Um, not only did we minister and work in Jerusalem, but we also would go into Bethlehem. And after a few years of living in Israel, we moved into Bethlehem because I was asking the Lord, Lord, where are the ones that you were calling us to. I knew there was more to the reason why the Lord sent us there. And after hearing and obeying the Lord, going into one refugee camp in particular, my wife and I, with our team that we would bring in, made friends with a lot of people, including one gentleman who was head of a movement, a Fatah movement. And after having a relationship with him for some years, uh, he would have me actually come in and pray for the clerics that worked in the mosque. And I would always tell him, you know I pray in the name of Jesus. And he goes, yeah, I know, you're a sage. Just come on in and, and, and just give him a, a good word. And I would do that. I did that one time. There was seven of them that lived in this one particular refugee camp. The love that I saw that came from these folks were so amazing. And when they feel the love of Jesus, they know it's real. And I, it was a wonderful privilege and honor to have this man who was ahead of a, a Fatah movement see Jesus in me, to trust that within me, to give that away to the ones that he thought would be blessed with prayer. Well, and I know I've been over to Israel and different parts of the world many times, and I've actually interviewed a lot of people who are Muslims who had an encounter with Jesus through a dream. Actually, some of them actually were Jesus appeared to them. And uh, the Lord is doing a movement among Muslims around the world. Now, so let's go back to the book, uh, Brenda. So the Abraham scroll. So yes. you heard the Lord say about Ishmael, that you started, started to see the Ishmael, that there was a, a real divine purpose and destiny. So you started yes. looking at the names of actually what each of the sons' names meant? Yes, absolutely. This was an, a very important um, kind of a research as it began, research project as it began. And I just became enthralled in the names. So as I began to start the research, and in the book I, I talk about what led up to the research, why, why it was important, and um, we go well, through the definitions Well, you were telling me a story too that you were actually at, the, at a place, and what, what happened about the, they were, because a lot of the people, especially the, the Muslims, sometimes they don't feel like they have a purpose at least in terms True. of the Christian world. Yes. Well, Aaron and I had the privilege of operating a house of prayer within Bethlehem for about two years. And during that, house, during that period, time period, excuse me, uh, we had many groups and different types of people come through the prayer house. And, and when I first began to get this revelation about Ishmael, I began to teach it to all the students and uh, teams that came through and various people. But on one particular day, I was teaching a class. There was about 20 different people in there, plus some students that were attending our school. And we had a group of um, people show up from one of the close-by refugee camps uh, who wanted to just pop in for coffee. And they didn't realize I was in process of getting ready to do this class. So I said, you know, we would love for you to stay. And um, I'm just going to be doing the class for the next 45 minutes, and then we'll have coffee. And I said, but you're welcome to sit into the class. And we actually happened to have a, um, a Arab-speaking believer who actually was attending the class. So he was able to translate everything I was saying into Arabic so that they could understand, which was, I believe, a divine setup. So as I, and I'm going to go through this in a moment, but as I went through the names and then read the prophetic, poetic significance of how the names read, there became this extreme heightened awareness with the group and they all started talking to the translator um, and there was a lot of conversation going on they were asking tons of questions and of course Aaron and I are sitting here going okay we only can understand a little bit of Arabic but they were very excited about what they heard and they were asking our translator several questions about wow we didn't realize that Ishmael was so important that he had so much power and that the names of his sons and we didn't know that they were called princes and why were they called princes and there was all these questions um, came up. Well so now you have the book open to the, yes. the page what does the name Ishmael mean? Um, Ish, Ish 
Ishmael means God hears in Hebrew. So Ishma or Isma in Arabi means to hear. And El means God. So together it's God hears, Ishmael. And so there's people around the world that might be Arabic, Muslim, and many times, in particular, the Christians don't really understand that right. we, many, often the Ishmaelites seem to be pushed off to the, to the side, almost like they were banished into the wilderness somewhere. Is that what a lot of Christian mindset is? Uh, unfortunately, that is very true, because I remember even just when I first came into the church and when I got saved, and all the teachings and stories that I would hear about Ishmael was that he was a mistake and... Um, he was out of time. He shouldn't have been born in that time. They, Abraham didn't wait for the promise. So, you know, there is a lot of this kind of teaching going on, which I have to say never sat well with me. I remember even as a young believer saying, I just cannot believe that this young prince was a mistake, even early on. So as I started to go through the names from Genesis 25, 13, these are the names of the sons of Ishmael. And this is named through their birth order as well. So I thought, I really want to release this piece. It's a very prophetic piece. I believe it's going to bless somebody out there. They're going to have new insight. I believe people are going to have visions. They're going to have a greater understanding, and it's going to really burst your proverbial bubble <laughs> of what you believe for about what the Ishmaelites have become or what they are now. So we're going to quickly just go through the 12 names, and then I'm going to read the poem. So the first son of Ishmael is Nebaioth, and the name means fruitfulness. The second name is Kedar, and it means the skin of a tent or a tabernacle or a curtain. The third name is Ab, Ad, excuse me, Adbiel, or disciplined of God or a vapor. The fourth name is Midsam, and that means a clay vessel or a fragrance. The fifth name is Mishma which means a hearing or a report. The sixth name is Duma, which means silenced. The seventh name means Masa, and that means a burden to be carried away. The eighth name is Hadar, which means mighty. And the ninth name is Tema, which means admiration, perfection, consummation, and righteous. The tenth name is Yetur, which means order, succession, and mountainous or a circling wall. The 11th name is Nafish, which means to be refreshed or refreshment. The 12th name is Kedima, which means to take precedence, original, to be first. And when the Lord revealed these names, and I did the research in Hebrew, he said, I want you to read them in the order of their birth. And so I'm going to read to you now what is called Ishmael Scroll, this reveals his destiny. And then we're going to ask you a very important question after we read it about who it points to. Okay, so through fruitfulness, he was brought into the world. He tabernacled among us and was disciplined of God. Like a clay vessel, he held the hearing of his report. He was silenced at death and carried our burdens away. In his might, he lived in perfection through righteousness. He was a circling wall of order and brought refreshment so that he could take precedence over our lives. He is the original for which we come. Wow, that sounds like Jesus to me. Yes, it is the revelation of Jesus or Yeshua or Yeshua. <laughs> and it's very exciting when I first, the first moment that I read those names straight down, uh, something exploded in my spirit. And I thought, I knew it. I knew there was more to Ishmael, that this proves that the descendants of Ishmael or the prince's royalty of Ishmael have a destiny to reveal Yeshua, to reveal Jesus. And many times they feel like they've been pushed aside, and you've discovered this being you know, a man working in the Palestinian refugee camps. I asked you a question earlier. Why do some of these young men join these groups like Hamas or ISIS? And you, you said that one of the men answered to you. You asked him this very question, who had actually joined the, the recent conflict in the Gaza. 
yeah, I asked him, why did you feel you need to, to join this organization, Hamas? And he says, well, what else is going on? What else is going on? And knowing a little bit about their family and about life there inside those, the refugee camps and life in the West Bank, it, it's, it's difficult to find any significance when a lot of the parents can't afford to send their children to school, when a lot of them are caught into a system, they're caught into a mindset that don't go beyond the borders and boundaries of where they're at. So a lot of them will join these, these organizations for significance, for something more than what they see that's right in front of them. Well, you know, I remember, I remember meeting you guys when I was in Israel, but uh, I want to just share a brief story. I was in Israel and was actually on the day, we were in Jericho when they had an event at the Jordan River called The Crossing. And I remember we had met in Jericho this man named Isaac who would do translation for us. Mm -hmm. And after this event, I remember looking at Isaac and hearing the Lord said, I have a word for you. And God gave him a word that this was very interesting listening to me. The Lord said, the Lord started reading his mail, saying you're tormented at night, you can't sleep. The Lord knew things about him that only God knew and only he knew that God knew. But God was revealing it to me. And then the Lord said something to me very unique. He said, but I'm not Muhammad, I'm Jesus. And he said, will you accept me? And I just feel God's heart. And I looked at Isaac and he said, I said, will you accept Jesus' son? And he said, yes. He received Yeshua, he received Jesus that day. And his life changed. I feel, Aaron, that you have a word. There might be somebody watching right now that maybe they're one of those Muslim guys, one of those Muslim people, part of the Ishmaelites. What would you say to that one? I would say it's time to come home. You felt a significance. You felt a destiny within your bones that have been burning. And this is the Lord. This is Jesus calling you into great destiny in him. Great destiny. You, you have found other things you've gotten involved in. They didn't work out. You have tried every which way to find destiny in your lives. And there are many of you right now that have been watching this program, some of you even secretly thinking if this was only real. Well, I'm here to tell you, working in the refugee camps and in my own life, that Jesus is real and he is calling you. He's saying, come. He's saying, come. Come unto me and I will give you rest. And more so from what was given to my wife is he wants to give you a destiny and a purpose that is beyond anything you could ever imagine or understand. It's time for you to come home. And, and basically it's, it's as simple as just asking him, say, Jesus, come into my heart. He says, I, behold, I stand at the door and knock. All you need to do is open the door, say, come in, and Jesus will come and live in your heart. It's that simple. So now, Brenda... Why would people want to read the book Abraham Scroll? I know it talks about the destiny of a name, destinies of a culture, but individually people think, okay, this sounds good. It sounds, I understand now the Ishmaelites, it's open up to me that they really do have a purpose for God. Yes. But what would you just say to the one that say, well, why should I read this book? I believe as individuals, we all have personal destiny. So it's not just about, we're learning about Ishmael Scroll, we're learning about Isaac and um, Isaac scroll or Israel scroll but what about your scroll what about what's on your own personal life and, and your destiny and I talk about that in the last chapter about what's on your scroll and the plan for your life and how to develop that and how to seek God for it so it's it's not just um, about other lives but it's definitely pertaining to your own life as well well and God is a God about genealogies you know if you look even in the in the old testament and the new it, it was very important that it said and you know the father of was this and it goes all the way down through the, yeah. the genealogy so each of us has a destiny and each of us is called but you know you were talking earlier Aaron that a lot of the you know the Palestinians and Muslims sometimes they feel pushed aside mm -hmm. and so because of the conditions in some of these camps or in some of these these areas around the world, they almost feel like I want to become a part of something. That's why people in LA, the city that we're in, mm -hmm. join gangs. Exactly. Because exactly. they want to feel like they're a part of something that matters. That's right. 
So, so anyway, what are the little nuggets in the books? And you said there's several nuggets that, that, that as they read it, it's going to yeah. be revealed to them. Can you give us another nugget? Sure. Um, well, we just released Ishmael's scroll, which was a huge nugget. And we talked about his mother, Hagar, being a daughter of Pharaoh, which makes her a princess, hence. So, but when you say this, because it's not necessarily you read, you've got some of this data through some ancient writings. Yes, yes. Some of my research came from other sources in the Middle East. And, but at the same time, there was a ringing true in your spirit when you can kind of chew the meat and spit out the bones and say, this is good, this isn't. Wow, this is real. Wow, I really feel the presence of God on this. This was one of those answers that I had. Why are Ishmael's sons called princes? And the Lord told me because their mother is a princess. So, you know, that completely made sense to me that if she's the daughter of Pharaoh, she would have been a princess. So that's, that's a huge area of research that's in the book that you can, you can read through and get all the details. And it's the same thing with uh, Israel's or um, Isaac's scroll as well when you go through that. All the names of the tribes of Israel are listed, and there's also the great poetic significance. And at the end of the book, there is a prayer journal. Um, I really wanted the book to incite prayer for the Middle East for all of Abraham's sons. So there is 30 pages at the back of the book that go through various scriptures about the Middle East, specifically Israel and about Ishmael, and that will help you to just get a new heart and a new passion for praying for your other brothers and sisters that are around the world. Well, now, if they want to purchase the book, where can they go? The book is available now on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. So you can order it. And so they just, they just put in Abraham so Scroll? Type in that name, Abraham Scroll, and you will see this picture come up, and you can order right online. And actually, both you and Aaron are, are also artists. I mean, yes. Aaron did all the, the graphic artwork on the front. Yes, is that did. correct? He did a beautiful job. Well, you know, this is the, the, the great thing that God is bringing everything together. We're in the end times, and the Bible says that these things are going to happen. You know, there's going to be famines and earthquakes and, you know, wars and rumors of wars. And I was reading, actually, in the Word this morning, it was talking about in the last days that men will be lovers of themselves, boasters, proud, disobedient to parents. Uh, you know, we're in this age of the soundbite society where everybody wants their 15 minutes of fame. You know, they, they look at me. But you're in a culture, you guys have been uh, such that you've given. You know, you've lived in Mozambique, working with uh, Iris Ministries, going over to Israel, working in the Palestine refugee camps, mm -hmm. going up to Scotland. You tend to go into some hard places to crack. What would you say, Erin, just in the final, you know, last minute or two, of what you would want to share from your heart to the people listening? What I want to share is intimacy with the Lord is everything. Intimacy with God is the breaker. Every country that my wife and I ministered in, it was always giving Jesus away freely, being transparent with who we are and were to everyone, knowing that we weren't and are not perfect, but being a friend, just like Jesus is a friend. But also, never taking shortcuts either in bringing people alongside to pray, never disqualifying people because of judging them in their walk with God or not even knowing God. We, just, we would bring a lot of our people from the refugee camps with us when we were praying for people that were sick and they got to see the Lord heal people. When we begin to stay focused on Jesus, not looking to the right or looking to the left, staying in love with Him, that is contagious. And it's out of that love that brings people into awareness of who Jesus truly is. Because we're in a time, I believe, Mary, that it's not about what we say. It's not about what we say now. It's about being a signpost. Well, in fact, you were just telling me earlier, uh, they brought you before the Palestinian Authority because in your work in the camps, people were actually feeling the power and the presence of the Lord that they brought you in because they thought you were drugging these people. Is that correct? They actually brought us in a uh, very intimidating process, but uh, we were making the, the army guys laugh. And 
But when we met the head guy, we were being accused of actually placing drugs inside the tea, uh, heroin, to make them joyful, to make them laugh. So it was a place where after we shared our hearts about what Jesus was doing and the miracles that they had heard about, the gentleman that was the, the head guy, he says, I was raised in Hebron. He says, no one like you or your wife and your team has come through like that. He said, come to my camp and, min and minister like you do in this one. Wow, that's his, amazing. His, his very hard exterior just totally melted away. And by the time we were done, he actually was weeping because he felt the goodness of Jesus. And my wife and I were just ourselves, just like what, what you see now, just very casual and just loving them and where they were at. You know, Brenda, just closing, what would you say, just in like 30 seconds to those watching? It's my prayer that this declaration of, of Ishmael's scroll that we just read, that you would have a new revelation and a new desire to pray for all of the Arab communities and, and people groups, that it would give you a new perspective of how God sees them, and not what we see in the natural, but what God says about who they are spiritually and what their destiny is. So that's what I hope you are left with. Well, listen, thanks for coming on the show, Aaron and Brenda. Thank you and so I much. want to thank you for watching thank today. You. I'd like you to go and purchase this Abraham scroll, Unveiling the Destiny of the Sons of Abraham. Each of you has a calling. Each of you has a purpose. God knows your name, and it's written down. And I just feel his heart for you right now that you are chosen for this season. This is your time to say yes to God. It's your time not to play around, and it's time to focus and get real because we're seeing some stuff coming down that the only way out of this thing is one way, and that's Jesus. For he said that he was the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man or woman would come unto the Father but through Jesus. So today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you would say, Jesus, come into my heart. Heal me, forgive me, free me, and he will show you your divine destiny and your purpose for your life, which only you can fulfill. So thanks for watching. Now is the time. If you'd like to get a hold of me, you can actually visit my webpage, and it's my name. It's www.marycrowley, Mary spelled M-E-R-I-C-R-O-U-L-E-Y.com. I'm also on Facebook. I'd love to hear from you and, and that the program blessed you today. Remember, now is the time for you to fulfill your destiny. I hope to see you next week, and thanks for watching.